I'm happy. I'm very happy. Do we have a new person? Why don't you uh, take your nameplate and move this arm one? If you want to. Never mind. Never mind. Oh. Rod's here. Fashionably late. Just let me know. I know what you're talking about. How you doing? All right, the uh, June 12, 2024 meeting of the Missile Code Enforcement Board is now called to order. If everyone would please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance is to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the Municipal Code Enforcement Board is charged with conducting hearings to determine whether an alleged violation of the city code has occurred. Decisions made by this quasi-judicial board will be based on the evidence and facts presented this evening. Our meetings are conducted in accordance with Robert's Rules of Order, and each case will begin with the city presenting its evidence of the alleged violation. The respondent will then present his or her case. Both parties will have an opportunity to cross-examine all witnesses. The board members may question any witness. Comments by both parties must be relevant to the case. Persons wishing to speak will be given an opportunity to do so by the chair and must address the board from the podium after giving the name and address. Upon request, copies of materials submitted by staff are available for review. Board members are reminded to obtain permission to speak from the chair and questions of the city should be directed to the attorney for the city. At this time, I'll ask all persons who expect to give testimony tonight to please stand and be sworn in by the city clerk. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony or evidence you're about to give or present is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Great, thank you. Okay, ex parte communications. At this time, I'll ask the board members if they had any ex parte communications regarding any matters coming before the Code Enforcement Board this evening. If you've had verbal communications, please disclose the sum and substance of the communications, when and where the communications occurred, and with whom it occurred. If you received any written communications, please disclose the nature of the communications and provide a copy of this to the city clerk to be filed in the record. No, sir. I've had none. 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 Very good. Thank you. Approval of minutes. Hopefully everybody's had a chance to review the regular minutes held on May 8, 2024. But there are no additions or corrections. <coughs> I'll entertain a motion to approve. Motion, motion to approve. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No nays. Motion carries. Okay, we will be taking the, the uh, cases in order tonight. I know that's oh. a little bit different than what we normally do, but we will be taking each case in the order they appear on your agenda. All right. So with the first case. Okay. Case number 240787, City versus Walden Green for the property located at 8505 Wakula Drive. The case is before the board based on an alleged violation of section 8-10213B, exterior walls, maintained in good condition, and section 8-10213K, hardware, screens. The case will be prosecuted this evening by Code Compliance Officer Lori Smith. The city has evidence that the notice of violation and notice of hearing were properly served. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, board members, Lori Smith, Code Compliance. This case originated proactively on February the 23rd, 2024. My inspection revealed exterior walls on the front of the structure stained with mildew, the front window ledge and screen were also in disrepair. At that time, I left a door hanger with the reinspection date of the 19th of March, 2024. My reinspection on March 25th, 2024 revealed no change. Therefore, a notice of violation was prepared with the compliance date of the 10th of April, 2024. No one was at home, so I posted the notice letter at the front door and requested copies be sent certified and first class mail to the owner of record. <clears throat> I also requested a copy be posted at City Hall for the 10 day requirement. At this time, I would like to submit photographic evidence of the violation that was taken by me on March the 26th, 2024, showing the violations. Oops, okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. 
<clears throat> Mr. Chairman, a friend of the family, uh, Wendy Hamill, contacted me on the 26th of March, 2024. She stated the owner had passed away and that the daughter of the owner, Ms. Patience Green, would be needing an extension to bring the property into compliance. An extension was granted for an additional two weeks until April the 24th, 2024. My exhibits, exhibit number one, shows a notice letter posted at the front door. Exhibit number two shows the front exterior window ledge and screen in disrepair. Exhibit number three shows the front exterior wall stained with mildew. Exhibit number four shows the front exterior wall stains on the top column. As of today's date, the site is not in compliance and I am seeking a ruling. Any questions for the code officer? Yes, sir. Um, have you had any additional contact? No, sir, I haven't. <clears throat> they have not reached out uh, since Ms. Hamill um, on the 26th of March. I have not heard from anybody. I haven't seen any vehicles uh, there at the house, um, so I'm not sure as to uh, what is going on. Okay, so there's no indication of what they're trying to do with the property at all? They haven't done anything. Um, Mr. Hubert, they haven't done anything uh, since then. Um, no, no cleaning uh, of, any, of any sort. No, no, taking the window screen down. Uh, nothing has been done. Um, I'm sure, just maybe, probably still dealing with the loss yeah. uh, of the family member, possibly. <clears throat> yes. Uh, nobody lives there. Now. No, sir. Not that I'm aware of. Uh, since the owner passed away, uh, the daughter would be, uh, you know, is responsible for already going in, uh, taking care of uh, the residents, and and also, sir, uh, really to to bring the property back into compliance. But I've never spoken to uh, Miss Green. Uh, like I said, the the friend of the family, uh, Miss uh, Wendy Hamill, was was the uh, the lady that reached out pertaining to the violations. I believe that the daughter was very distraught over the passing of her father, which is certainly um, understandable. Um, hopefully, with just a little bit more time, uh, if the board would uh, grant an extension, uh, hopefully the uh, the property would be able to be in it would be able to be brought into compliance um, as a, really just some some cleaning, some pressure washing. Uh, you can remove the window screen. Uh, probably the biggest thing to have to try to do would be the window ledge um, there in the front. Um, it's, not anything major, major hard to have to do. Um, the yard is fine. Yes, sir. And no safety issues for the other residents or anything. No, sir. Okay. That, that was my question. Is the uh, is the yard in danger of becoming overrun or anything like that? No, it's not. The yard is is fine. Um, it's just the building that needs a little bit of cleaning. Like I said, just a little bit of pressure washing would get the uh, the stains off. Right. Yeah, right. but if, if, Mr. It, if it goes like another couple of weeks, the yard's not going to be overgrown or anything, I guess. So, you know, it doesn't it, seem to be at least, right? It's, it's not right now, but um, if nobody takes care of it, sir, yes, we could be in an overgrown uh, situation. At that point, um, I would um, reach out to uh, Ms. Hamill and uh, ask for some help. Um, if not, she was not the, the person of contact, maybe the, the information for the daughter, uh, Ms. Patience Green. Um, <clears throat> to bring me up to speed on, on who's taking care of it as far as the landscaping. Any other questions? Thank you. Yes, sir. The respondent is not here? No, sir. If there's no other questions, I'll entertain a motion. I'll start. Go ahead. In case number 24-0787, I move that the city has proven by the greater weight of evidence the following violations of the city of Temple Terrace City Code exist on the property located at 8505 Wicolo Drive, Wicola Drive, with the applicable code violation section 8-102, subsection 13, subsection B and section 8-102, subsection 13, subsection K. This motion is based on the sworn testimony this board has received from the code enforcement officer, Lori Smith, along with other witnesses and other evidence, including photos, affidavit, and the notice of violation of which received and entered as part of the record of this hearing. I further move that the said violation be corrected on or before July 10th, 2023. 24. If the respondent does not comply with this order on or before that date, 
They are ordered to pay a fine for each and every day. The violation continue past the date for this compliance. Upon considering the following factors, the gravity of the violation, any actions taken by the violator to correct the violation, any previous violations committed by the violator, I move that the fine be $25 per day. Do we have a motion? Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? I'll say something. I, considering it's just cleaning and it was a death, I wouldn't mind giving 60 if you chose to do so. Um, I know. I mean, we've give, we've been pretty broad with other cases, so. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, however, uh, I, I looked at the days. She, they already had ample time, and it's they very simple. Back in February of twenty, February twenty third. Yeah. Okay. February. You know, that's why I was gonna uh, considering if something really major, yeah. pressure cleaning, as Glory said. That's why I chose the thirty days. Okay. Not fair. No other questions. All those in favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. No nays. Motion carries. Next case, please. 24-0836, City v. Betty and David Heschinger and Harold Madero for the property located at 10027 North 52nd Street. The case is before the board based on an alleged violation of <coughs> Section 8-10213B, Exterior Walls, Maintained in Good Condition. Section 10-3B, Sanitation, Grass Weeds. Section 8-10213B, Exterior Walls Maintained in Good Repair. And Section 12-861E6, Fences Appearance. The case will be prosecuted this evening by Code Compliance Officer Doug Allen. The city has evidence that the notice of violation and notice of hearing were properly <coughs> served. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and board members. Doug Allen, Code Compliance Officer. This case was originated by me on February 26, 2024 for overgrown conditions, stained and faded exterior walls, damaged exterior walls, and a wooden privacy fence in disrepair. I left a door hanger with a reinspection date of March 11th, 2024. My reinspection on April 19th showed no change, so I prepared a notice of violation on that date with a reinspection date of May 6th. 2024. I posted the notice at the front door and a copy was posted at City Hall for the 10-day requirement and copies were mailed both certified and regular mail to the owner of record. My reinspection on May 13th showed no change so I prepared a notice of hearing on that date and the case was scheduled for the June Municipal Code Board meeting. This time I'd like to submit photographic evidence taken by myself on April 19th and May 13th, 2024. Thank you. I will accept it. Thank you. Exhibit number one shows the notice of violation posting. Exhibit number two shows the overgrown conditions. Exhibit number three shows the stained and damaged wall. Exhibit number four shows the damaged wood fence. And exhibit number five also shows the overgrown conditions. The site is not in compliance and I'm seeking a ruling. Any questions for the code officer? But the yard is overgrown too, right? Yes, sir. Did, uh, are, did you get any contact from the? I haven't board? heard from anybody. Nobody in there. Um, is it just me, or is it section eight one hundred two thirteen B is mentioned twice? In mine, it is. It's well. Um, it's mentioned twice. It's mentioned twice. Is there two separate violations? Uh, if that's the walls, then it would be because there's stained walls and a damaged wall. Oh, stained and damaged. Okay, separate. Okay. You said the respondent is not good. That's correct, sir. There's no other questions. I'll entertain a motion. Anyone? 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 Go ahead, Rob. Sure. Yes, sir. In light of what the uh, uh, board member Hubert just mentioned, the 8-102-13B only needs to be mentioned. Once. Okay. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> and just taking notes. Sorry. Okay. There we go. So we have. Uh, okay. That's similar to the other one, but. Uh, Did you want to do it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> In case number twenty-four dash zero eight three six, I move that the city has proven by the greater weight of evidence the following violations of the city Triple Terra City Code exist on the property located at. 10027 North 52nd Street with the applicable code violation section A-102 subsection 13 subsection B and section 
dash eighty six eight six one subsection E subsection six. This motion is uh, based you on missed one. Uh, that's the repeated one. No, no, ten ten dash three B. Oh, sorry, sorry, yeah. And sec and section uh, ten dash three B. This motion is based on the sworn testimony this board has received from the code enforcement officer Douglas Allen and other witnesses along with any other evidence including photos, affidavit and the notice of violation of which received and entered as part of the record of this hearing. I further move that the violations be corrected on or before July 10th, 2024. If the respondent does not comply with, with this order on or before that day, they are ordered to pay a fine for each and every day. The violation continue past the date set for compliance. Upon considering the following factors, the gravity of the violation, any actions taken by the violator, any previous violations committed by the violator, I move the, be the fine be $50 per day. We have a motion, do we have a second? Second. Motion is second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No nays. Motion carries. Next case, please. Next case is case number 24-0885, City v. Janie Martin, for the property located at 103 Mission Hills Avenue. Case is before the board based on alleged violation of section 10-3B, sanitation grass weeds. The case will be prosecuted this evening by Code Compliance Officer Doug Allen. The city has evidence that the notice of violation and notice of hearing were properly served. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and board members. Doug Allen, Code Compliance Officer. This case was originated by me on February 29th, 2024 for overgrown conditions. I left a door hanger with a reinspection date of March 4th, 2024. My reinspection on April 19th showed no change, so a notice of violation was generated on that date with a reinspection date of April 26th. I posted the notice at the site and a notice was also posted at City Hall for the 10 day requirement and copies were mailed, both certified and regular mail to the address of the owner of record. On May 2nd, my reinspection showed no change, so I prepared a notice of hearing on that date and the case was scheduled for the June Municipal Code Board meeting. This time, I'd like to submit photographic evidence of the site taken by myself on April 19th and May 2nd, 2024. Thank you. Exhibit number one shows the posting of the you know, notice of violation. Exhibit number two shows the overgrown conditions. Exhibit number four shows the overgrown, or three shows the overgrown conditions. This time I'd like to submit an affidavit of compliance as the site is in compliance and I'm seeking a finding. Thank you, we'll accept that. Any questions for the code officer? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion. I'll do it. Thank you. <laughs> In case number 24-0885, I move that the city has proved by a greater weight of the evidence the following violations of the City of Temple Terrace Code did exist on the property located at 5018, no, that's not it, 103 Mission Hills Avenue, um, violation being section... 10-3 subsection B. This motion is based on the sworn testimony this board has received from the code enforcement officer Douglas Allen along with any other evidence including photos, affidavits, and the notice of violation all of which is received and entered as part of the record of this hearing. I further move that there be no further imposed that there be no fine imposed because the violations were brought into compliance prior to the date of this hearing. One small correction, it's Mission Hills Drive, not Mission Hills Avenue. Oh. Okay. So with that correction, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No nays. Motion carries. Next case, please. Case 24-1165, Gladys <coughs> S. Cashton. TR for the property located at 441 Biltmore Avenue. The case is before the board based on an alleged violation of section 10-3B, sanitation and grass weeds. The case will be prosecuted this evening by code compliance officer Lori Smith. The city has evidence that the notice of violation and notice of hearing were properly served. Thank you. Good evening again, Mr. Chairman, board members, Lori Smith, code compliance. 
This case originated proactively on March the 28th, 2024. My inspection revealed overgrown grass weeds in the front yard of the residence. At this time, I left a door hanger with a compliance date of the 4th of April, 2024. My reinspection on April the 12th, 2024 revealed no change. Therefore, a notice of violation was prepared with the compliance date of the 17th of April, 2024. No one was at home, so I did post a notice at the front door and requested copies be sent certified and first class mail to the owner of record. I also requested a copy be posted at City Hall for the 10 day requirement. Mr. Chairman, Ms. Ham reached out to me on the 17th of April, 2024, concerning the notice of violation letter. She stated she was having difficulty reaching her landscaper and asked for additional time of a week to bring the property into compliance. I granted an extension until April the 25th. 2024. At this time, I would like to submit photographic evidence of the violations taken by me on the 17th of April and May the 13th, 2024. <coughs> Thank you, sir. Exhibit number one shows a notice letter posted at the front door. Exhibit number two and three shows the overgrown grass and weeds in the front yard. As of today's date, the site is now in compliance. At this time, I would like to submit an affidavit of compliance, and I'm just seeking a finding. Thank you, sir. Any questions for the code officer? Mm -hmm. Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion. I can do this one. Thank you. In case number 24-1165, I move the city is proven by a greater weight of evidence the following violations of the city of Temple Terrace code did exist on the property located at 441 Biltmore Avenue, uh, applicable codes being 10-3 subsection B. This motion is based on the sworn testimony this board has received from the code enforcement officer, along with other evidence, including photos, affidavits, and the notice of violation, all of which is received and entered as part of the record of this hearing. I further move that there be no fine imposed because the violations were brought into compliance prior to the date of this hearing. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. A motion to second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? No nays. Motion carries. Next case, please. Can you move my second? Aye. 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 Twenty four dash one four zero five City versus Mariah Selinski and Dominique Selinski for the property located at three twenty five Bernard Drive. The case is before the board based on an alleged violation of section eight twenty eight A one permit application required. The case will be prosecuted this evening by Code Compliance Officer Lori Smith. The city has evidence that the notice of violation and notice of hearing were properly served. Good evening again, Lori Smith, Code Compliance. Uh, this case originated from community development on April the 2nd, 2024, requesting a notice of violation letter to be prepared for work without a permit for interior reno and window replacement. I prepared a notice of violation with a compliance date of the 17th of April, 2024. No one was at home, so I did post the notice letter at the front door and requested copies be sent certified in first class mail to the owner of record. I also requested a copy be posted at City Hall for the 10 day requirement. At this time, I would like to submit photographic evidence of the violations taken by me on April the 2nd and June the 11th, 2024. Also, a screenshot of the stop work order in Central Square. Exhibit number one shows a notice letter posted at the front door. Exhibit number two shows the stop work order in center square. Exhibit number three shows the east side window replacement. As of today's date, the site is not in compliance and I am seeking a ruling. Any questions for the code officer? Yes. Um, I, I keep asking the same question again and again. The, the wind, I mean, I could see the interior renovation if the little pieces of work they did not obtain a contract. But the windows, usually you have a window company that has a contractor or what's happening. So you say it originated at the... Uh, it originated from community development, sir. It was instructed by community development to prepare a notice of violation. Uh, the building official is here this evening. Uh, so if you uh, have some more questions, I think that they, those may be better floor. posed to the building official. It doesn't matter who's doing the work, whoever's doing the work didn't get a permit. Did not, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just commenting. That's about it. That's Has there been any contact about what what's going on with, as far as getting the permits? Um, 
If, if you don't mind, uh, I believe our, our, the building official, Mr. Dallas Foss, um, gotcha. did speak to the, uh, the resident uh, when uh, he happened to notice that there was some, some work going on uh, the, at the location, and he spoke with the gentleman, uh, letting him know that a, that a permit was, was, was needed um, for the type of work that he was uh, going to start doing. Unfortunately, uh, the gentleman didn't do it, and he just started the work. He finished? Excuse me. Did he finish the work? Uh, I, I do not know, sir. Um, maybe I Mr. Boss uh, may know uh, as the building official. He has uh, oh, no, the no. right to be able to, to go places I can't go and see things I can't. So. <laughs> really, we'd like to hear from him. Well, Dallas like Haas, building official. I came by and they were replaced. They had the windows out, spoke with the owner of the property, told them, come in, pull your permits, never showed up. Replaced the one window, pulled out another one. They have no permits. They're still working on the house, doing the work. So, look like they're doing something to the front door too, right? They've, yeah. they've, when they, when I knocked on the door, opened the door, the interior of the house, all the drywall inside the home, you could see, has been replaced. Uh, okay. So they're doing interior and exterior. We couldn't get, we didn't get access to the home to see what was going on, and they have not come in at all. Does it look like they're doing it themselves, or did they hire a contractor? He says he had somebody doing the work for him. Okay. But doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's still yeah. it's not it's on permitted work. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. You're welcome. And still not in compliance. As of right now, it's not in compliance. And does someone live there? And the compliance is is to get the permit. Okay. It's not you know it's, it's not a matter of finishing the work or the work's not done. It's just getting the permit. It's getting the permit. Yeah. Yeah. All right. No other questions. I'll entertain a motion. Okay, this one. In case number 241405, I move that the city has proven by a greater weight of the evidence the following violations of the City of Temple Terrace Code exist on the property located at 325 Brentwood Drive, uh, Section 8-28, Subsection A, Subsection 1. This motion is based on the sworn testimony this board has received from the Code Enforcement Officer Lori Smith, along with any other evidence, including photos, affidavits, and the notice of violation, all of which is received and entered as part of the record of this hearing. I further move that the said violations be corrected on or before July 10th, 2024. If the respondent does not comply with this order on or before that day, they are ordered to pay a fine for each and every day. The violation continues, the, continues past the date set for compliance. Upon considering the following factors, the gravity of the violation, any actions taken by the violator to correct the violation, and any previous violations committed by the violator, the move that the fine be $50 per day. We have a motion, we have a second. Second. Motion is second. Um, Dallas, come on up for a minute just to get some clarification. So essentially, you can't red tag because doesn't have a, I guess you can red If he doesn't, if this, if this, particular motion passes. Mm -hmm. Every day he goes without getting the permit past July 10th, the, the fine will continue. Is that correct? Correct. Right. Okay, so he has, to, he has to get a permit now. Once, a, per started. once a permit's issued, then now that he starts the work. That should right? cease, cease the fine. Is there any indication that the work is ongoing now? I've, <clears throat> I've been by there and I've seen, I happen to see one gentleman that was doing tile work in the interior of the home, which tile work does not require a permit. So. Right. But I tried to stop and catch the homeowner or somebody. But this isn't the first issue we've had with this house. Okay. Okay. Very good. Okay, so we motion to second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No nays. Motion carries. Next case, please. Next case is case number 24-1671, City versus TAH 2017-1, Borrower LLC, care of Tricom American Homes LLC, for the property located at 9851 Morris Glen Way. The case is before the board based on an alleged violation of section 10-3B, sanitation, grass weeds. The case will be prosecuted this evening by Code Compliance Officer Doug Allen. The city has evidence that the notice of violation and notice of hearing were properly served. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and board members. Doug Allen, Code Compliance Officer. This case was originated by me on April 17th, 2024 for overgrown conditions. I left a door hanger with a reinspection date of April 22nd, 2024. My reinspection on April 26th showed no change, so I generated a notice of violation on that date with a reinspection date of May 3rd, 
2024. I posted the notice at the front door and a copy was posted at City Hall for the 10-day requirement and copies were mailed both regular and certified mail to the owner of record. My reinspection on May 14th showed no change, so I prepared a notice of hearing and scheduled the case for the June Municipal Code Board meeting. I would like to submit photographic evidence taken by me on April 26th and May 14th, 2024. Okay. Exhibit number one shows the notice of violation posting. Exhibit number two shows the overgrown conditions. The site is in compliance, and I'd like to submit an affidavit of compliance, and I'm seeking a funding. Thank you. <coughs> Any questions for the officer? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion. I'll do it. Okay. In case number. 24-1671, I move that the city has proven by the greater weight of evidence the following violations of the city of Temple Terrace City Code did exist on the property located at 9851 Morris Glen Way with the applicable code violation section 10-3 subsection B. This motion is based on the sworn testimony this board has received from the code enforcement officer, Doug Allen. along with any other evidence, including photos, affidavit, and the notice of violation of which you received and entered as part of the record of this hearing, I further move that there will be no fine imposed because the violation has, were brought into was brought into compliance prior to the date of this hearing. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion is second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No nays. Motion carries. Next case, please. Next case is 24-1688, City v. Lonnie Mark Hammonds, for the property located at 414 Park Ridge Avenue. The case is before the board based on an alleged violation of Section 10-3B, Sanitation Grass Weeds. The case will be prosecuted this evening by Code Compliance Officer Doug Allen. The city has evidence that the notice of violation and notice of hearing are properly served. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and board members. Doug Allen, Code Compliance Officer. <coughs> This case was originated by me on April 18th, 2024 for overgrown conditions. I left a door hanger with a reinspection date of April 22nd. My reinspection on April 26th showed no change, so I generated a notice of violation on that date with a reinspection date of May 1st, 2024. I posted the notice at the site as well as at City Hall for the 10-day requirement, and copies were mailed both certified and regular mail to the address of the owner of record. My reinspection on May 14th showed no change, so I prepared a notice of hearing on that date, and the case was scheduled for the June Municipal Code Board meeting. This time, I'd like to submit photographic evidence taken by myself on April 26th and May 14th, 2024. Thank you. Exhibit number one shows the notice of violation posting. Exhibit number two shows the overgrown conditions. Exhibit number three and four show the overgrown conditions. On some of the photos do not accurately reflect how high or overgrown the site is, but the site is not in compliance and I'm seeking a ruling. Any questions for the code officer? Any contact with the... I haven't heard from anybody. Evan? Is it... Is, is there people living there? No, it's a vacant home. Um, the former resident had sold it, oh, probably close to a year ago, not quite. And somebody's bought it. And I've noticed this past week that I've seen a handyman van in the driveway doing something on the inside, but nobody's nobody's cutting the lawn. Nobody's cutting the lawn. Very good. Thank you, sir. Sure. There's no other questions. I entertain a motion. I'll do it. Thank you. In case number. 24-1688. I move that the city has proven by a greater weight of the evidence the following violations of the City of Temple Terrace City Code exist on the property located at 414 Park Ridge Avenue. Violation being, where am I? Um, section 10-3, subsection B. 
This motion is based on the sworn testimony this board has received from the code enforcement officer, Douglas Allen, along with any other evidence, including photos, affidavits, and a notice of violation, all of which is received and entered as part of the record of this hearing. I further move that said violation be corrected on or before July 10th. <coughs> This respondent does not comply with this order on or before that date. They are ordered to pay a fine for each and every day the violation continues past the date set for compliance. Upon considering the following factors, the gravity of the violation, any actions taken by the violator to correct the violation, and any previous violations committed by the violator, I move that the fine to be $25 per day. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No nays. Next case. And just before we go to the next case, uh, my agenda says the last case, 500039, that's been pulled. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So we only have one case left? Yes. Okay. Next case, please. Okay. Next case is 24 2003, City vs. Betty and David Hessinger and Harold Madero for the property located at 10027 North 52nd Street. The case is before the board based on an alleged violation of section 22-91 city garbage service required and section 8-1022 hot and cold water. The case will be prosecuted this evening by code compliance officer Doug Allen. The city has evidence that the notice of violation and notice of hearing were properly served. Thank you. Good evening once again board members and Mr. Chairman. Doug Allen, code compliance officer. This case was originated by a list supplied by utility billing on May 6, 2024 of a residence whose water meter had been locked and pulled and they no longer had an active water or garbage account. I went directly to a notice of violation on that date with a reinspection date of May 16, 2024. I posted a copy of, at the residence and a copy was posted at City Hall for the 10 day requirement and copies were mailed both certified and regular mail to the address of the owner of record. My reinspection on May 17 showed no change, so a notice of hearing was prepared on that date and the case was scheduled for the June Municipal Code Board meeting. This time I'd like to submit photographic evidence taken by myself on May 6, 2024. Accept that. Thank you. Uh, exhibit number one shows the posting of the notice of violation. And exhibit number two shows a water turnoff report. The site is not in compliance and I'm seeking a ruling. Uh, now you can not have water service if the site is unoccupied, but the date I put the notice of violation, it was a window unit AC running, so I made the very broad assumption that somebody was actually living there. When's the last time you were out there? Uh, today. I didn't hear it today, no. But as far as you, like, no contact or anything with No, it's the same case that had the fence yeah. and the... Are they, like, new owners by any chance? No, my understanding is the first two people on the property appraiser's list were the, well, the, the woman was the mother of the other, the third person that's there. I think it's Madrero or something oh. like that. And she has since passed away. And the stepfather doesn't really want to have anything to do with the site, so the his stepson has been living there for several years and, and, and certainly hasn't paid for the water to the garbage. Haven't been right. Oh my Who's Mike? Me. Okay, there's no other questions, I'll entertain a motion. Yeah, in case number 242003, I move that the city has proven by a greater weight of the evidence the following violations of the City of Temple Terrace City Code exist on the property located at 10027 North 52nd Street. And that is section 22. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, what did I mess up? Yeah, that's not the right address. Oh, I'm looking at the wrong. Okay, is that right? Yeah. yeah. That's, okay. Wait a minute. Hang on a second. For case number 242003? Yeah, I have 9851 Morris Glen Way. Nope. No. That was a previous one. That was, it was probably, no, it was it was probably yeah. an error. Okay. So what's the correct address? 10027. 10027. 10 North 52nd Street. North 52nd Street. Okay, thank you. And uh, the code section is section 22-91. Uh, 
and section 8-102, subsection 2. This motion is based on the sworn testimony this board has received from the Code Enforcement Officer, Doug Allen, along with any other evidence, including photos, affidavit, and the notice of violation, all of which is received and entered as part of the record of this hearing. I further move that the said violations be corrected on or before July 10th, 2024. If the respondent does not comply with this order on or before that day, they are ordered to pay a fine for each and every day the violation continues past the date set. Upon considering the following factors, the gravity of the violation, any actions taken by the violator to correct the violation, and any previous violations committed by the violator, move that the fine be $25 per day. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion is second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? No nays. Motion carries. That completes our new business on the unfinished. Okay, so it's case number 236292, City versus Chelsea Jenkins for the property located at 7510 Gadsden Drive. The deadline for compliance is tonight at midnight. And Officer Smith is here with the respondent. Just to kind of bring you up to speed, board members, um, the, the, the case uh, is for wall stating that is on the east side of the uh, of the structure, as well as a support pole there on the, uh, the patio that it was missing one of the poles uh, to hold up uh, that support. Uh, Ms. Jenkins is here uh, this evening and would like to address the board, please. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. I just hey, knew on, I was on, not going to have to come back in here. Name an address first, please. <sighs> Unfortunately, I am here. Um, I want to say a week and a half ago. Hang on, hang on. Name oh. an address, please. Hmm? Your name and address. Oh, I'm sorry. Chelsea Jenkins, 7510 Gaston uh, Street. No, Gaston Drive, Temple Terrace, 33637. Okay. Okay. About a week and a half ago, my car went down. That was like $1,000 to get fixed unfortunately and I have to fix my car in order to go to work um, originally exactly what she said outside looking in it's just that one spot that appeared to be the immediate problem however when I had my handyman come out to look at it he said that whole side beam was rotted so I have to replace all of that which is labor and material a total of 850 and unfortunately I don't have a thousand dollars for my car and almost another thousand dollars to fix wood that I thought was just going to be one piece. So if possible, I am just asking for another 30 day extension, which is two paychecks to be able to cover. Um, Lloyd, can you come up a minute? Yes, sir. Is there any safety concerns with that particular beam and the missing pole and uh, no, sir, I do not believe so. I believe it's more of a, for a decorative uh, type of uh, thing there in the front, but uh, Mr. Foss would probably be able to, you know, uh, give you maybe a little bit more information. I do not believe it is any kind it's of... It's uh, still in, standing at the moment, right? So. Yeah, it's, it's not, uh, not going to fall down. Okay. Uh, sir, the poles are pretty small, um, and, and again, it's, it's not a safety concern. It's more of a decorative visual uh, type of, uh, you know, these poles there in the front. Yeah. Um, and uh, like I said, okay. Ms. Jenkins has been in contact with me. Um, unfortunately, like I said, just some, some hard times fell on her. <laughs> so you're looking for an extension to July, uh, what's the next one? Uh, next, yeah. July 10th? Yeah. Board, what's your pleasure? I'll make a motion uh, to give you an extension to July 10th. Uh, yeah, that works. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed, no nays. You have an extension. Now, if something comes up, okay, another car breaks down or you, you, something, you, you're going to have to come back and see us on the 10th. Otherwise, good luck and okay. hopefully it's hopefully all repaired by then. Happens. Okay? Thank you. Oh, I, I will. I will. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Next nice case. Next case is a case 234652, City versus David J. Cumberland, for the property located at 5106 Pulling Hill Court. The deadline for compliance is tonight at midnight. And Officer Smith is approaching. 
Mr. Chairman and board members, uh, this is I'm coming, coming on unfinished. Mr. Calhoun was granted an extension. It was for a, uh, a tarp on a roof. Uh, sir, the last uh, board meeting that we had, we, we uh, got to hear from his, his contractor. Um, from my understanding, uh, the, the job has started at the location today. Um, and Mr. Calhoun is, is also here this evening that could give the board a little bit more of an update as far as how far they got, sir, and how much more is needed to bring the property into compliance. And it, it's... Uh it's it expires tonight at midnight, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Hello, it's uh, David Calhoun, 5106 Rolling Hills Court, uh, Temple Terrace. Um, they the roofing company came this morning. They they started work at about eight o'clock this morning. Uh, they've they've taken off the roof. They they put down. Uh, they haven't put the shingles on yet. When I left to come up here, Florida room in the back. They they tore half the roof off because the wood had to be replaced. So it was, it was looking up at the sky when I when I walked in here today. So hopefully they'll be done tomorrow. They they told me it's only going to take a day or two. So I'm hoping maybe tomorrow or next day it's done. I mean I, I don't know how they work. But they just they showed up and start working today. So. They blow and go. I mean, they, they don't want to be there any longer. No, I know they, they, don't, don't, want, they don't want to be there any longer. Yeah, so. <laughs> than they have to be. So, um, unfortunately, you know, we, we, we rotate on a monthly basis. So, um, um, I assume you're gonna you want at least some extension. Uh, yes, please. And we're gonna uh, well the extension we'll have, we're gonna be giving you is t until July 10th. Okay. That's uh, even though it's going to be done tomorrow, so you should you should be coming in compliance by then. If something were to happen, if 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 we if you get the extension tonight, um, and something were to happen where I don't know some, um, some, something happens, you're going to have to come back and see us again. But uh, as long as everything goes smoothly and they are done tomorrow, we're let's, we're we're all, we're all done. Okay. Yeah. Fortunately, the insurance paid for everything. So awesome. Nice. I'll make them. You're going to have to write a book about how you got it done so fast. They had a friend to roofer. <laughs> okay, so the uh, gentleman is looking for an extension to our next meeting. I, uh, in case 23-4652, I make a motion to extend the deadline till July 10th, 2024. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? No nays. Motion carries. Good luck. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Next case. Next case is 24-0448, City v. Gregory and Carmen Keith for the property located at 307 Druid Hills Road. The deadline for compliance is tonight at midnight and after day of compliance was issued by Officer Doug Allen for Section 8-10213C, dated May 15, 2024. Awesome, thank you. Case number 24-0556, City v. Aslanbeck and Dunia Kadarsev for the property located at 5106 East 122nd Street. The deadline for compliance is tonight at midnight. The property owner is here tonight to ask me an extension. Okay. Or just to give us an update. Well, um, before she comes up, why don't you remind us of the, the history on this particular property? This was a violation that was presented by me last month for public nuisance of a building. Um, the city is really looking for the structure to be built. This was a fire that happened several years ago, about six years ago. And um, so the city is just looking for some construction work. They're putting block mounts in the block on the uh, exterior of the... Yeah, this is where, this is this, this is the property where they said they had the, the trusses were in storage and... Yes. Okay. Yes. So the, the property owner is here tonight just to update the city. Okay. Uh, my, my mic is on. Um, yeah, my, my mic's on. My mic's on. Can I go? Yeah, come on up. Oh. Come on up and state your name and address for the record, and then. He's pointing to you. Yeah, he's talking. To you. <laughs> my, my light's on. Yeah. Uh, Gotta get closer to the mic, I guess. <laughs> Speak up, Tom. Okay, <laughs> name and address, please. Good afternoon. My name is Dina Ramirez Kadarsev with the address 5106 East 122nd Avenue. Temperature is Florida, 633617. I come here to bring an update that the. Before it was just the foundation, now the blocks there have gotten up. And I have some pictures for like well, for submit today. Them. Hand them over to Ernie. Give them to Ernie first. Thank you Ernie, do you want to see him first? Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> and these pictures were taken by you? Yes, by and, me. And today. are they dated? Yes. Uh, yeah. uh, it was just actually right after I got here. Okay, so you're testifying that those pictures were dated today? Yeah, like 
Yes, yes. Okay. Okay. Right after I got here, and I just printed out on the Procopy right. next to the Publix. Okay. That's I mean, I have it on my phone, too. I want to make sure we get it on the record. Okay. Plus, Dalla was over my property, so he saw in person okay. that is being stuff going right. on. And where, what, what's, what's happened? What do you, what have you done? What, what have uh, you? Uh, pretty much, almost all the blocks. Are, I mean, they have gone all the blocks of up, but they still have like, uh, like a couple more feet. I don't know a lot about it, but they, 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 they put it up to a certain point, and then, you know, I guess all the, the top of the windows and everything, and then they have to go like, a, like, a couple, like a two, two more feet. Two up. more courses. Yeah, but pretty much like it's whatever, all the walls that they're, they're supposed to be, all the spaces that you see, it's for like uh, uh, like sliding glass doors and doors and then windows, okay. uh, pretty much. Sure. So what's required is there's a header that goes above the- Oh, a port header? It's a port header, but it's concrete. Right. And above the sliding glass doors is a header there. That's yeah, what she, that's yes, what yes, thank you so much. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> So when is that scheduled? When is the concrete scheduled? Uh, I mean, every day they're doing work on the blocks. The thing is that, you know, the cheapest person that we found to do the blocks, I mean... Do you know when the, when the concrete is supposed to be poured for the, for the headers? Uh, for that? I don't know. But I, I believe it also had to be an inspector for that. But I'm, I'm not sure. I'm sure it's it shouldn't, it shouldn't sure. probably like a like, like couple more days or something. I mean, everything is pretty much up. It's just like... I mean, they were pretty fast. It's, it's just like, because they were also waiting for the scaffold that I actually got my friend to borrow. And if I remember correctly, there was an issue with getting a um, electric meter out there. Has that been taken care of? That, yes, I went to see Dallas. Uh, Dallas explained me that what he needed it is mainly uh, a work order number from Tico. And then he's telling me that the, the previous electrician, he haven't done anything about it. Um, I personally called the TICO. They told me nobody had created any work order. So I stand by the phone for like a like couple hours until I finally got the work order. And then I give it to Dallas. And then when we were about to call inspection, because we couldn't uh, hear back from the electrician that we have. so. I have to fire the electrician because, again, I mean, it's, you know, I don't know why people just. So we got right now that I told him another electrician, and then I didn't want to do the inspection uh, because I was ready to do. I even told him I was ready for him. We even, I even went down and, and paid a fee that the electrician haven't paid. I pay. So I was ready to do inspection right away the next day, but then my contractor say that he don't want to do the inspection with the old electrician name on there. Because it's just, you know, this is no... Not there anymore. Yeah. So he already got my, the other electrician that it should be easier because he also registered with Tempo Terrace. He's supposed to, like, like probably like today, tomorrow, already send, because my contractor has to send, has they explained me, a letter saying, uh, we have removed this electrician, and then we're going to replace it with this electrician. And then the electrician also has to send a letter to the temperatures like, hey, this is my name, my, my, my license, and I'm going to be working under this permit. But then he already is registered, so, you know, that part is already... So that, that's in the works. Yeah, that's about the, ele the electrician guy, but that's supposed to be, like, you know, Dallas told me, like, that, you know, how soon did they receive the letter? It's like they can't even schedule like right out next day. Okay. The inspection for the meter, the meter is still there. When since. do you think that's going to happen? The letter probably, I need to call my, my contractor probably tomorrow because we already got, you know, we already know who's going to do it. So, but I had to, I had to get rid of the electrician. Okay. He, he, he got paid to pay the fee and then he didn't pay. Yeah. Sorry to hear that. Um, Tom, last time, last month, um, you were not satisfied with the progress that was going on. That's are you correct. are you now satisfied? I am. Okay. I'm ready to submit an update of compliance. You are. At least, yes. Okay. It's midnight tonight, and uh, I just wanted to hear what she had to say this evening. Okay. So I'm satisfied, and um, I've also saw the progress myself. So. You're welcome anytime. <laughs> anytime, welcome. <laughs> All right. Question. Go ahead. This is the same case that we thought. You remember, it was almost going to be a repeat violation. It, it, it was a repeat. Yeah. 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 It was presented. Yes. But she's she's good now. 
Well, I'm glad we gave her. As long as you keep moving forward. Exactly. Yes, I know. I know. As long as you keep moving wanna... forward and get those trusses up. Yes. Okay. okay. Oh, once again, I'm so sorry to interrupt. We were talking the, the last time that, you know, the roof that I'm going to have in the house, it's not going to be like your regular roof like this. It's going to be a flat roof. Uh, and then it has to have some support walls built inside. And then the trusses. The trusses is the last thing. No, like, versus any other regular than once the block is up, you put the trusses, and then you do framing inside. It has to be the trusses the last. Framing inside first yes, because the of the way that yeah. the, the, so, the roof okay. is. As long as progress is being made. Yeah, as long as progress so, is being made. So, um, I mean, we don't need to give her another extension because he says he's going to submit, a, he's going to submit an affidavit of compliance before midnight tonight. It's midnight tonight. Right. And I'll submit an update of compliance tomorrow morning. Very good. So we don't. There's nothing for us to do. No. All right. You're good. Thanks. I wanna wish you all happy Father's Day. Thank you. And if you can tell Bill, like he can, can get well. I noticed he wasn't here, and then I hear you. Yeah, Bill. Yeah. Bill, thank you. He'll be happy to hear Absolutely, that. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. He always so positive. Thank yeah. you. So <laughs> <laughs> thank you, guys. Good luck. Keep it. Keep it. Keep it. Keep the progress going. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much. All right. Next case. Next case, case number 24-1021, wow. City versus Elzenzami, M. Elzenzami, for the property located at 235 Willowick Avenue. The deadline for compliance is tonight at midnight. An affidavit of compliance was issued by Officer Doug Allen for Section 8-28A1, dated June 11, 2024. Case number 24-1385, City versus White Glove Holding two, Holdings 2, LLC, for the property located at 1401 North River Hills Drive. The deadline for compliance is tonight at midnight. I have cases not on the agenda. Okay. So case number 23-1265, City versus PPGDT Temple Terrace, LLC, for the property located at 8942 Bertha Palmer Boulevard. An affidavit of compliance was submitted by Code Compliance Director Tom Baroni for sections 12-1047, 12-1047, 12-1047, 8-1668A, and 8-1668B, dated May 14, 2024. And second affidavit of compliance was submitted by Director Baroni for section 10-31, dated May 29, 2024. This case is no longer a Karina lien. Pretty good. Case number 23-1753, City vs. Progress, Resident, Progress Residential Borrower 21 LLC for the property located at 9039 Water Chestnut Drive. An affidavit of compliance was submitted by Code Compliance Officer Lori Smith for Section 8-28A1, dated May 15, 2024. This case is no longer a Karina lien. Fantastic. Case number 236170, City vs. 5400 Bush Boulevard, LLC, for the property located at 5400 Bush Boulevard. An affidavit of compliance was submitted by Co Code Compliance Officer Doug Allen for Section 8-28A1, dated May 10, 2024. This case is no longer a Karina lien. Case number 23-2847, City vs. John and Hiroko Cardi. For the property located at 418 Dunedin Circle, a lien reduction was granted and the lien has been paid. This case is no longer on the liens list. Cool. Case number 23-3443, City versus Asbel and Maria Reyes. For the property located at 829 East River Drive, a lien reduction was granted and the lien has been paid. This case is no longer on the liens list. Case number 23-3597, City versus Elvira L. Machado. For the property located at 12609 North 52nd Street, this lien has been paid and the case is no longer on the liens list. Very good. Thank you. Hmm. Okay, that's old business. Uh, is there any other board action? If we have a number of, uh, okay, liens report. Any, anything new to report on liens? No. Okay. Uh, we have a couple, few items under new business. Uh, Mr. Chambers has an announcement first. And then I have two others. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, James Chambers, uh, City Council Liaison to this board. I wanted to bring this board uh, attention to an item that was on our agenda in, uh, last council meeting last week. And that was uh, City Council made a proclamation proclaiming last week Code Officer Appreciation Week to such a great staff we have. So that was a proclamation by City Council. <laughs> and that is my announcement. Very good. And, and we do have a great staff. 
Okay, a couple of other things. Uh, one, you notice that Mr. Snelling is not here tonight. Um, he has been in the hospital since June 3rd with back surgery. Okay, so we also have a, a new member who is actually officially an alternate, uh, but got to sit up here today because we, we, ha we had the space for her. Why don't you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your background and, and, and thank you for joining us. Hi, I'm Taylor Williams. I've lived in Temple Terrace since, officially since 2020, but I did live in Temple Terrace when I was attending undergraduate school at the University of South Florida in Temple Terrace proper. Um, and it is a pleasure to serve. My background is in education. I'm a high school teacher, um, but I am just a committed community servant and I'm thrilled to be here to represent my city. Which high school do you teach at? Florida Virtual High School. Oh, cool. Very good. Well, thank you. I watched when they appointed her. <laughs> The same thing for the yeah. the last council meeting. Yeah. Very good. Okay. Anybody else have any new business? Just a uh, comment. Um, talking about the show and Stalling. If I picked up a, a get well card, if we just signed my staff signs it, can I pass it along to you guys? Oh yeah, yeah, sure. You think that's a good idea? Yeah, yeah. Long yeah. As, a card? as long yeah. as it comes with a notice violation. <laughs> <laughs> you missed you missed the meeting. <laughs> yeah. We want to be sure that uh, nothing on there is uh, going to be something that comes before you. So no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, item. You have an item? Okay. Close yours. It, it's um, it's regarding the uh, the uh, I think the is it the financial um, disclosure disclosure mm -hmm. that I went online. Finally, it got to me. I filled it out. I could not believe how simple it is. It's even it, simpler than before. So it is. Yeah. I hope. It, how do we know if it's complete? Or well, you should have gotten. Well, I got it. I never did get the email. I got a postcard in the mail. Saying, saying we've been trying to reach you, which I don't, you know, I've been filling these things out for, for decades. Um, but you're right, you, you go online and you fill it out, and you should have gotten an email confirmation back from them that you're good to go. I did. Okay, that's all you're going to get. It. That's yeah, that's all. it, yeah. Okay. And there's, you'll see, right. if, you, if you go on there, you'll see there's a, a box to check to see if you took the ethics course. It's not mandatory for this board to take the ethics course. Yes. Uh, but if you if you find time to do it, the League of Cities has it. Um, I, I recommend doing it at least once while you're up here. Um, takes takes about I think three hours, um, but it's it's w well worth your time and, and um, may open your eyes to some things that you weren't aware of before. I went online to do it, and it said that it didn't have any record of me or something like that. Well, there's also a helpline phone number. Okay. That so you can go back online and call them, and they will, they will, they will help you. Okay. She'll come for did you uh, did you get a postcard in the mail? No, but I but I but there was an e I did notice there there was an email, so I clicked well, on. Well, on the email there should have been a, a code for you to put in on the website. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe did you, I did. you still have the email. I'll, I'm if sure. If not, go she back said. to that website. There's a phone number that you can okay. call. Okay. All right. Cool. And then um, the other thing that you guys may not be aware doesn't doesn't apply to us, but it does apply to elected officials. Um, there's been a stay put on the new financial disclosure that that James has to fill out. Um, a, a number of cities, not us, but some other cities and some other groups um, sued uh, because they said, it, and there was a lot of I think there was a bunch of attorneys that actually presented the lawsuit. Uh, saying that it was uh, overbearing and, and a violation of their privacy and all this other stuff. And uh, right now there's a stay on that particular form that you don't, if you haven't filled it out, you don't have to. Why it goes through the court system. So, anything else? I had the feeling that Ernie had to do or wanted to say something. No, uh, I, I, it was pretty much handled by his. No. Okay. So motion. motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All those in favor. Aye. All right. We are adjourned. Thank you. Aye.